Guys, I have been listening to the Pass Labs X250.8 stereo amplifier for a while. Thanks to Pass Labs for sending it to me to review and compare against the XA60.8 monoblocks I've had here for a couple of years. So let's talk about these two amps and I'll let you know which one I prefer, the sound character of each, and uh, yeah, let's get started. Welcome back everyone. Today I want to talk about, I want to compare two different amplifiers. Uh, first, I want to compare the Pass Labs XA60.8 monoblocks, which are 60 watt per channel class A amplification from Pass Labs. I want to compare those to the Pass Labs X250.8, which is a class AB higher power amplifier with 250 watts per channel into eight ohms, which doubles down into 500 watts if you're powering four ohm speakers. Now, the X250.8 is a singular, big, massive monster of a stereo amp. The XA 60.8s are monoblocks, so there's two of them, and though each one is slightly smaller than the 250.8, they are still pretty massive. Now, I've had the XA 60.8s in my system for the last couple of years. I take them out when I review other amplifiers, but I always come back to the past labs in my reference system because that is the sound at the end of the day that I love and adore. And I've made videos about past labs and what I love about them, but mostly it's that organic type of sound, that human touch, the emotional aspect where it provides a sound that speaks to my heart and soul big, beautiful sound stage, delicate details, air, holographic imaging. These are all traits of the Pass Lab sound. Um, but there are differences between the Class A amps and the Class AB amps. Now, Class A is a sound I've always loved. Class A is not the most efficient amplification. In fact, it will cost you the most in electricity to run a Class A amp uh, uh, compared to all other types of amplifiers, whether it's Class AB, Class B, or Class D. Class A is the most expensive to buy, usually the most heaviest, and usually the most expensive to run. They also run the hottest. A pair of XA60.8 amplifiers in here, which run all Class A at 60 watts per channel into eight ohms, really warm up this room in the summertime. In fact, in the summer, it's almost too hot to run those amps. So I like running them in the winter time. Um, but the sound differences between the all class A XA series and the class AB series like the 250.8, there's a definite difference. Now I've had the 250.8 in here for a while now. I've had it hooked up into my system with the DCS Lena DAC the DCS Lena Clock, as well as the Pass Labs XP22 preamp. Uh, for speakers, my reference is still the Fleetwood DeVille uh, SQs. They are, for me, the best speakers I've ever heard for my personal tastes and what I've heard in this room. The 60.8s are a warm sounding amp. They're a little rolled off in the treble. They are not the most detailed or exciting or lively listen. The Class A amps excel in the mid-range beauty. They offer that warm, luscious mid-band that has a little bit of a, a plumpy mid-bass, and that causes vocals to sound big, and in some cases, larger than life. The vocals project forward into the room, and the imaging performance of the 60.8s is astonishing but they are a warmer leaning amp. With the Fleetwood DeVilles, the 60.8s can be too much of a good thing by a little bit because the DeVilles also have a warm leaning mid-range. And any other speaker that I've heard that had a big warm leaning mid-range, the 60.8s are almost a little bit too warm. But when I pair those 60.8s with other speakers that have a livelier top end, there is magic to be found. So as always, synergy is key. 
but with the 60.8s installed, they just have this uh, sense of power, warmth, grace, and beauty. Uh, and I have yet to find a speaker that they could not power with effortless ease. When I plugged in the 250.8, the X250.8 from Past Labs, and I hooked up the DeVilles, gone was that little bit of a, a rolled off treble. Instead, I heard a sweeter, more extended treble, a little more attack to each note, but I still had that warmth in the mid band, though not as much and an even bigger, wider soundstage. I heard better layering with the 250.8 and lo and behold, even better texture for my ears in my room with my gear. The 250.8 seems to have endless power. Now, 250 watts in the eight ohms, that's a lot of power. When I was a kid, we considered 100 watts per channel to be the ultimate, right? So 250 watts per channel is pretty powerful. There's a lot of high current going on with this amp. It has balanced outs. So you can hook it up uh, to your, or balanced ins, you can hook it up to your preamp via XLR or via single-ended RCA cables. Um, it's a beautiful amp. It has that aluminum front with the big expanded blue uh, dial or meter in the front. Now the Pass Labs meter is different than most. This is not a VU meter. Uh, whether you buy the 60.8, the 250.8, or any Pass Labs amp, past, present, or future, that has a meter on it, uh, that's basically measuring the class A bias. Now the X250.8, from what I understand, I might be mistaken here, but what I've been told is the first 25 watts are in pure class A. So if you have an easy to drive speaker, most likely you're never leaving class A. But I have found that class A performance of the 250.8 sounds totally different than the class A sound coming from the 60.8. And I have to say, with the DeVilles, I do prefer the 250.8. It's just a livelier amp. It has more punch and kick. Um, it brings a more live feel where the 60.8s really excel with that vocal region, something like closed mic jazz, or just vocal performances, or even acoustic instruments, the 60.8s are superb. But pretty much with everything else, and vocals and jazz and acoustics, the 250.8 is almost unmatched by anything I have heard. The 250.8 has a rich, uh, throaty mid-range, a sweet but extended top end. The bass, these, this amp controls the bass of any speaker I've hooked up to it um, like I haven't seen in other amps or other integrated amps. And it has a tighter, more focused, controlled bass than even the 60.8s. Now the 60.8s cost more money because they're two amps, you're having mono blocks, uh, and mono blocks can enhance their performance of some systems. But if you want that class A rich sound, the 60.8s will give it to you more than the 250.8. Again, synergy all depends on the speaker matching. 60.8s will like neutral to, to um, leaner speakers. The 250.8 will prefer neutral to warm speakers. Um, I just love the Pass Labs quality, the Pass Labs style. I love that big blue meter. And that big blue meter, you will only see that line move uh, when you go out of class A. So if I'm running the 250.8 and I'm running the DeVilles, I'm never leaving class A on the 250.8. If I hook up, for example, the Bucard P300s that are much harder to drive, and I turn it up to dance party levels, I see that meter bouncing and moving, meaning I'm leaving class A and I'm now using the class AB power of the amp. It's a beautiful amp. Uh, it's close to, if not around 100 pounds in weight. I managed to lift it up onto my cabinet um, with the help of Debbie, uh, thanks to her. Uh, otherwise, I would have never been able to get it up there. These things are heavy. The sides are metal heat sinks. And if you're gonna lift it from the sides, I recommend some gloves. But there are grab handles on the back that allow one to lift it up. You just need a second person to lift the front up to set it down wherever you're going to set it. You will want ventilation around this. You don't wanna put this amp in a closed cabinet because it does run warm. 
It's not gonna run as warm, say, as the Class A offerings from past labs, but it will need ventilation. You can't put this thing in a cabinet. Compared to the integrated 250, now with the XP22 preamp and the 250.8, I'm getting a sound that exceeds what I heard in the integrated 250. The integrated 250's preamp section is based, I believe, on an XP10. The XP22 is a couple levels higher than that preamp, and I'm getting more refinement, uh, more holographic imaging, a sweeter treble still, a more open sound, and just a warmth that is um, just right. Not too much warmth to where it dulls the speakers, but not too little where it makes them sound leaner fast. The 250.8 is still a warmish amp, but it also extends that treble and it gives that iron grip control in the bass. So what kind of review would this be if I didn't show you the back of the X250.8? You have your speaker connectors here. And one thing I like about this amp, if you're using spades here, you plug in your spade and when you tighten it, it's not going to let you over tighten it for that click. Make sure it's the perfect tightness. I like to use bananas, easy plug into the back. You have your RCA um, inputs. You have your balanced inputs. I'm using RCA right now. I will be switching to balanced here very soon. That's normally how I listen. I'm running a Puritan audio uh, ultimate power cable into it, but I mean, it's pretty basic. You have your uh, inputs and your speakers and everything is heavy duty uh, made in the usa from past labs um, super super quality all the way around so i still love past labs for amplification it's overall my favorite brand of amplification uh, amazing customer service made in the usa you pay a lot but you're getting what you pay for is every past labs piece that i have experienced is one that you can keep for life, whether that's the integrated 25, the integrated 60, the integrated 250, this X250, or any of their products. Uh, they're all top notch, they last a lifetime, and uh, they just sound organic, real, and human. The X250.8 is now uh, my favorite amplifier that I have heard. Uh, it surpassed the XA60.8 because it does better with my reference speakers here in this room. And that's amazing because it took the performance of these speakers up yet another notch over even the Luxman 595, which I praised with these speakers as well. So highly recommend the X250.8 as well as the XP22 preamp. Now I have the XP10, the XP12, and the XP22 here. The XP22 is more airy, more transparent, has more beauty and magic within the sound than the XP12. I can only imagine what the XP32 sounds like. That's the three box unit. The XP22 is two box. One is the power supply and one is the preamp, but it is so refined and so beautiful in sound. This is a magical combo and one that um, is will we'll leave you wanting for nothing as long as you match the speakers to it. I can't think of any speaker that the 250.8 will not drive. I've uh, tested it with the Bucard P300s. I've heard it with the Mofi Source Point 10s. Uh, I heard it with some Dyn Audio Special 40s, uh, and I'll hear it with many more speakers to come, I am sure, and it sounded beautiful with all of them. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, thumbs up and subscribe. Feel free to share. I love you all and I will see you next time.